Picture a foggy dawn on October 14, 1066. The English countryside stirs as armored feet march, shattering the silence. The air is thick with anticipation and the weight of destiny. Two formidable leaders, William the Conqueror and Harold Godwinson, play their strategic games, each maneuver a calculated dance in the theater of war. In the heart of this tension, a solitary helmet lies on the battlefield. As the first rays of sun pierce the morning mist, history is about to be written in blood. As the sun rises, the first arrows fly, signaling the start of a battle that would redefine England. Two formidable forces face one another, each with their own strategies, each with their own visions of victory. On one side, the Normans led by the ambitious and cunning William the Duke of Normandy. He commands his men to adopt a unique formation, a mix of infantry, cavalry and archers. On the other side, the English led by the brave and determined King Harold Godwinson. He orders his men to form a shield wall, an impenetrable barrier of soldiers standing shoulder to shoulder, their shields interlocked. The air is thick with tension as the first wave of Norman infantry charges, crashing into the English shield wall. The clash of steel against steel, the cries of men, the thundering hooves of the cavalry. Despite their best efforts, the English lines begin to falter. The fate of a nation hangs in the balance. In the heat of battle, a single decision can change everything. On this fateful day, the English warriors, driven by bravery, or perhaps recklessness, broke their shield wall. This formation, a bulwark against the Norman onslaught, had been their lifeline. It was a moment of high stakes, of adrenaline and fear, where the unexpected happened. The Normans, spurred on by their leader, William the Conqueror, seized this opportunity. They saw the break in the English lines, the chink in their armor. The Normans, who had been on the back foot, now found the tide of battle turning in their favor. It was a pivotal moment, a twist of fate, a gamble that paid off. In the chaotic dance of clashing steel and desperate men, the Normans pushed through the gap, driving a wedge into the heart of the English forces. The balance of power shifted. With the English lines broken, the Normans seized their opportunity, forever altering the course of the battle. In the midst of chaos, a king falls. The tides of battle have turned and we find ourselves in the heart of the storm, where Harold Godwinson, the last Anglo-Saxon king of England, meets his fate. His reign, marked by courage and controversy, is abruptly ended on this battlefield. Harold, a figure of resilience, valiantly leads his men into the fray, his determination unwavering despite the overwhelming Norman forces. But as the battle rages on, a fatal arrow finds its mark. Harold, the man who defied a conqueror, is brought to his knees. With his demise, the spirit of the English forces wavers, their morale crumbling like a castle besieged. The fall of a king, it's a sight that strikes fear and despair in the hearts of his men. The once unified English forces begin to fragment, their resolve shattered. With their king slain, the English forces retreat. The Battle of Hastings comes to a bloody end. In the aftermath of the battle, a new ruler ascends the English throne. As the dust settles on the battlefield of Hastings, the victorious Norman forces stand tall, their leader William, now the conqueror, ready to claim his prize. The English crown, once worn by Harold Godwinson, is now in the hands of a foreign invader. A decisive change, not just in leadership, but in the very fabric of English society, begins to unfurl. The immediate aftermath sees a land in turmoil, a kingdom reeling from the loss of its monarch and the abrupt shift in power. William's ascension to the throne isn't smooth sailing by any means, he faces numerous uprisings, rebellions and challenges to his authority, yet with a firm hand and strategic alliances he manages to quell the dissension and solidify his rule. The new Norman reign brings with it a wave of changes, the English nobility is replaced by a new Norman elite, altering the political landscape. The language of the court changes from Old English to Norman French, setting the stage for a linguistic evolution that would shape the English language as we know it today. William's reign also sees the introduction of the feudal system, a hierarchical structure that defines land ownership and societal roles. This system, though oppressive to many, provides a certain level of order and stability, crucial in the wake of such a seismic shift in power. The architectural landscape of England transforms under William's rule. The construction of castles and cathedrals in the Norman style become a symbol of his authority and the enduring influence of Norman culture. In this new era, England experiences a cultural and societal metamorphosis. The Battle of Hastings and the subsequent Norman conquest leave an indelible mark on the nation's history. This is not merely a change in rulership, but a complete redefinition of what it means to be English. 
The face of England is forever changed, but the full impact of this battle is yet to be seen. With a new king on the throne, England enters a new era. Indeed, the Battle of Hastings was a seismic event that ushered in profound and far-reaching changes. For starters, the Norman Conquest, led by William the Conqueror, fundamentally altered England's governance. The feudal system, a hierarchical structure where the king granted lands to his barons in exchange for military service, was introduced. This system, while fostering clear lines of authority, also sowed the seeds of social inequality, a struggle that would echo through the centuries. But the changes weren't just political, the cultural landscape of England underwent a drastic transformation as well. Norman French, the language of the conquerors, became the language of the court, the aristocracy, and the legal system. This linguistic shift enriched the English language, infusing it with a multitude of French words that we still use today. Words like royal, justice, and even beef all have their roots in Norman French. The architectural style of England also experienced a significant shift. The Normans, master castle builders, dotted the English countryside with their formidable stone fortresses. These castles, symbols of Norman power, not only transformed the physical landscape but also served as strategic military outposts. And let's not forget about the ecclesiastical transformation. The Normans reformed the English church aligning it more closely with the continental European practices. This shift had a profound effect on religious life in England, shaping the spiritual and moral framework of the society. In essence, the Battle of Hastings was a catalyst that propelled England into a new chapter of its history. Its impact reverberated through the corridors of time, influencing not just the fate of a nation, but also the course of Western civilization. It's a testament to the fact that a single event can set off a chain of changes that can ripple through centuries. This battle didn't just shape a nation, it reshaped the world. The echoes of the Battle of Hastings can still be heard today. It's not just a story of a single battle, but a pivotal moment that would shape the trajectory of England and indeed, the world. This battle, fought on a foggy day in October of 1066, did more than just crown a new king. It set in motion a series of events that would forever alter the course of history. In the aftermath of the battle, William the Conqueror introduced Norman rule, a new language, and a new culture to England. This fusion of Norman and Anglo-Saxon traditions laid the foundation for the English we speak today. Some of the most common words in our vocabulary, such as castle, court, and judge, are direct descendants of Norman French. The battle also sparked a dramatic shift in governance. The feudal system implemented by William replaced the Anglo-Saxon nobility with a network of loyal Norman lords. This system of governance, with its hierarchy of lords and vassals, became a defining feature of the Middle Ages. Yet the Battle of Hastings was not just about change, it was also about continuity. Despite the political upheaval, England remained a land of great wealth and resources, attracting the attention of nations near and far. Its strategic location between the continent and the Atlantic positioned it as a global player, a role that England and later the United Kingdom continues to play today. As we reflect on the Battle of Hastings we realize that it was more than just a clash of swords, it was a turning point, a catalyst for change. Its echoes resonate in the language we speak, the laws we follow, and the global dynamics we navigate. The question remains, would our world be the same if the Battle of Hastings had ended differently? As we delve into the annals of history, we are reminded of the profound ways in which the past continues to shape our present and our future.